Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and heard it off stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 22nd of March. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrives in Thimphu, receives Bhutan's highest honor. Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif says another IMF bailout is inevitable. And Gilgit Baltistan facing environmental harm from CPAC says activists. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday arrived in Bhutan for an official state visit week after his Bhutanese counterpart sharing Topge's official visit to India. Upon his arrival, PM Modi received a ceremonial welcome and was accorded a Grand Guard of Honor by the Bhutanese Armed Forces. During his visit to the Himalayan Kingdom, the Indian Prime Minister held talks with the King of Bhutan, Jigme Kesa Namgyal Wongchuk, and the fourth King of Bhutan, Jigme Singe Wongchuk. Apart from this, he held bilateral engagement with his Bhutanese counterpart sharing top gear. PM Modi also received Bhutan's highest civilian award, the Order of Druk Galpo, which was conferred to Indian Prime Minister in 2021 for his efforts towards strengthening ties between the two nations. And merely months before Lok Sabha polls in India, the Enforcement Directorate on Thursday night arrested New Delhi's Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal in connection with the liquor policy case, becoming the first sitting CM to be arrested. ED officials arrived at Kejriwal's residence in the national capital shortly after the Election Commission of India published on its website all details relating to the electoral bonds. Kejriwal on Friday withdrew his petition from the Supreme Court challenging his arrest, informing the top court that he would contest the probe agency's custody instead. The AAP chief then was produced in a Delhi court by the probe agency which has sought 10 days remand of Kejriwal. The arrest has been condemned by all the opposition party leaders and has drawn protests across the nation. Puri gunda gardi hai Arvind Kejriwal ji ke ghar walon ko house arrest kiya hua hai. Arvind Kejriwal ji ki mata ji ek din pehle aspatal se aayi hai. Bete ko arrest kar liya. Ghar walon ko kisi se milne nahi diya ja raha. Uh, not only have they arrested a sitting chief minister of a state, but he's also the president of a national political party that has entered the electoral fray. So essentially at a time when the model code of conduct kicked in a week ago, you are taking steps that creates not only not a level playing field for all the parties, but obliges two of the opposition parties, the Congress whose accounts have been frozen, and uh, Mr. Kejriwal's party, the Ahmadni party, to enter that unlevel playing field with their hands and feet tied. Two senior AAP leaders, Manish Sisodia and Sanjay Singh, are already in judicial custody in the excise policy case and are in jail since February last year. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is ruling BJP party who is the largest recipient of electoral bonds and has received more than 6,000 crores. The ED has been under criticism of what is considered witch hunting against the opposition with its unbridled powers. Moving on, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif said on Thursday that a long-term bailout from the International Monetary Fund was inevitable given the South Asian country's broken economy. We could not survive without yet another IMF program, Sharif said in a meeting a day after IMF agreed on a staff-level agreement with Islamabad. If approved by IMF vote, it would disperse the last tranche of $1.1 billion under an existing of $3 billion standby arrangement which expires on April 11. The IMF mission that visited Islamabad earlier last week for the last review of the standby program had said, Pakistani authorities has expressed interest in yet another bailout. The global lender has already said it would formulate a medium-term program if Islamabad applies for it. However, government has not officially stated the size of the additional funding it is seeking under the long-term bailout. It in care, is this our ultimate achievement? The answer is big no. यानी हमें जहाँ पर अपनी जो माशी इस्तेकाम लेके आना है और मैक्रो लेवल पर जिसके लिए इंटरम गवर्नमेंट में काफी हुई उसकी भी मैंने भी तासीन की इसको अभी हमने इस मैक्रो लेवल सेवेलिटी को हमने आगे लेकर जाना है और जिसके लिए ये बात तय है कि एक और एग्रीमेंट के बगैर 
ہمارا گزارا نہیں ہے کب تک ہم آئی ایم ایف جو ہے اس کے سہارے پر چلیں گے لیکن کوئی ایسی سورسز کوئی ایسی چیز کوئی ایسی چیز سامنے جو ہے وہ نظر نہیں آتی کہ جس سے ہم فوری طور پر ان چیزوں کو کر لیں گے جب کہ پاکستان میں ہر وہ چیز موجود ہے اگر ان کے اوپر کام کیا جائے کس طرح تو یہ آئی ایم ایف سے بھی ہم جان چھڑا سکتے ہیں لیکن سمجھ نہیں آتی کہ جو حکومت آتی ہے اس کی کیا پالیسیز ہوتی ہیں وہ کس طرح کام کرنا چاہتی ہے اور کس طرح سے آئی ایم ایف سے چھٹکارا جو ہے اس کو حاصل کرنا Highlighting the ongoing struggle of Gilgit Baltistan residents for basic rights and equitable treatment amidst large scale development projects, activists have raised concern over the CPEC project, alleging it has caused irreparable environmental harm to the region. A report. Sardar Shaukat Ali Kashmiri, chairman of United Kashmir People's National Party, highlighted the pressing issues of the residents in Gilgit, Baltistan due to the detrimental effects of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and the failure of Pakistan government to address the concerns of its citizens. Kashmiri, while raising the concerns about the severe environmental impact of CPEC, said that the project has caused irreparable harm to the Gilgit, Baltistan region. Lamenting the lack of job opportunities for locals within the CPEC projects, he said, touted benefits of development remain elusive for the indigenous population. He also criticized Islamabad actions over demands for rights by local residents, alleging that the authorities resort to intimidation tactics, including threats to halt the supply of essential food items to suppress the dissent. The grievances raised by the people of Kashmir echoes their long-standing frustrations as they continue to struggle for basic necessities and equitable treatment. CPEC की वजह से जाहिर है कि इसने badly affect किया है environment को और जितने भी project चल रहे हैं उन projects में मकामी आबादी का किसी किसी का कोई नहीं है ना ही तो उनको कोई job job opportunities हैं और ना ही ان کو کوئی بنیادی انفرسٹرکچر میں کوئی حصے داری ہے اس لیے گزشتہ چھ سات ماہ سے گلگت بلدستان کے اندر بھی سویر کے سب کے پروشن جاری ہیں Taliban on Thursday rejected the claims Pakistani officials regarding the presence of members of Tehrike Taliban Pakistan in the country and considers their use of Afghan soil against Pakistan to be baseless This comes as Pakistan's PM Shehbaz Sharif Without naming Afghanistan said, he wants good relation with his neighboring country and emphasizes that the soil of neighboring countries should not be used against Islamabad. In the meantime, Pakistan's defense minister Khwaja Asif has warned that if the issue TTP is not addressed by the Islamic Emirate, the Pakistani will defend its country referring to conducting airstrikes again. He further said his country does not want armed action with Kabul, but there will be no doubt about it if necessary. The IMF on Thursday said it has reached a staff-level agreement with Sri Lanka for the next phase that would enable it access to $337 million for the nearly $3 billion US dollars bailout approved in 2023 for the cash-strapped country. IMF also praised Colombo as it said macroeconomic policy reforms are starting to bear fruit. IMF team were conducting a two-week long second review of the March 2023 bailout of $2.9 billion spanning over four years. The global lender also said that Sri Lanka's agreements in principle with the official creditor committee and Export-Import Bank of China on debt treatments consistent with program parameters were important milestones putting Sri Lanka's debt on the path towards sustainability. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.